All right, well, let's finally get going with this track. So uh, we're going to start with just our basic beat. We'll get kind of the kick and claps pattern going, and we'll use the drum rack to do that. Before we get going, though, make sure that you've downloaded the project file and the samples for, uh, for this project, for this course. And what we're going to do first is actually add the samples folder right here into the browser under our places so that we have quick and easy access to it. So I'm going to click Add Folder. That's going to open up my Finder on my Mac. And then you just want to find wherever you downloaded and saved that samples folder to. I saved it just to my desktop so I can see it right here. I'm going to select it and then press open. And it should add it once the beach ball is done spinning. It should add it to the list here under places. There it goes. And then because I want to be able to see that um, right near the top of the list, we'll just kind of drag and drop it up here. Whoops, I wanted to bring it up a little higher than that. There we go. Okay, so there we go. And then we can see our different subfolders. We've got drums, a couple different one-shot drum samples, effects, loops, synths, etc. We're going to be making use of all of these. But let's start with the drums folder. And let's load up an instance of the drum rack. So uh, on this first MIDI channel here, we'll go into our drums category, grab that drum rack, empty drum rack. And then we'll go back to our samples and let's grab our kick, which is here. We can preview it in the browser. Remember, if the preview is too loud or too quiet, you can adjust it by using this Q level here if you're looking at session view. If you're looking at the arrangement view on the master track, it's going to be this uh, blue fader on the right here. So anyway, let's jump back over to session view. And the kick, we're going to go ahead and drag and drop that onto C1. Now, I'm actually, you could, if you wanted to, you could take your claps and drag them into successive pads here on the same drum rack. I'm actually gonna put the claps onto a different drum rack, just so that when we're arranging, all the different drum elements are kind of on their own tracks. It's just gonna make arrangement a little bit easier for our purposes. So we're gonna rename this track from drum rack. I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna press Command or Control R. We'll just call this kick. So this is just gonna be the kick. And then we'll set up the other drum rack over here. Let's go back to our instruments, drum rack. And again, we can load in the default from here as well. And then we'll jump back to our samples. And then let's throw all three of those claps in. We've got three different ones, clap, clap two, and clap short. So let's throw clap in first, then clap two, and then good old clap short. I think that's all of them, right? We got our kick, our claps, and then the rest are hi-hat and other percussions. We're gonna use those in the next video. Okay, so we should be good for right now. Let's rename this one claps. Cool. And we're going to start in session view. This is where I like to start most of my writing. And we're going to start just by creating some MIDI clips and then uh, programming out the beats in MIDI. So it should be pretty simple. So we'll start with the kick. I'm going to go over here to the kick track. Uh, if you want to play the parts in by hand on your MIDI controller, just make sure that you record arm the track. We're probably just going to be drawing them in with the pencil tool for this video so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So to do that, first I need to create an empty MIDI clip. And I can do that simply by double clicking on one of these empty clip slots and it'll create a clip for me and it'll open it up down here in clip view. If it's not open already, remember option command L or option control or alt control L I should say on a PC will open and close this lower window for you that shows the clip view. If it's showing the device view where you're seeing the drum rack, remember you can click this tab down here to toggle over or you can use the shift tab key command to toggle between those two. So we wanna make sure we're looking at the clip view and then what we see in this uh, empty MIDI clip is basically just one bar of time that it gave us. And I think for the kick and the clap patterns, that's all we're going to need. So basically, we, we want to just throw together a simple four on the floor kind of house kick pattern. So I can either use my pointer tool and I can double click. We'll do, on the, we'll do it on the first beat here. Remember the, the grid uh, markers I was telling you about in the last video or in the arrangement view video. We were talking about that 1.2 and 1.3 that those represent the quarter notes. The same rules apply here in the MIDI clips as well. So this is gonna be quarter note number one, 1 1.2 is gonna be quarter note number two, and 1.3, number three, number four, et cetera. And the other thing I wanna point out is when you're looking at the grid in the clip view, those same rules apply in terms of setting up a fixed grid versus the adaptive grid. The narrow grid is the one that I like. And then down here in the lower right-hand corner, it's gonna tell us our current grid setting. So most of the time when I'm programming drums, and in fact, when I'm, when I'm writing most of my MIDI parts, 
I usually like to keep this at a 16th note grid, personally. And I think that's what we're going to do for this course. Um, but it just, it, most of the drum grooves that you hear in most music, especially house music, they tend to be programmed on a 16th note grid. And then maybe later there might be some swing or some shuffle or something added to them. But we're going to keep things pretty simple for this uh, level one course here. So we've got our four on the floor kick pattern. Let's see how that sounds. Now, the loop button down here is turned on. It actually turned that on for us automatically when we created the clip. Let's hit play. And let's see how that sounds. Sounds pretty fat. I like it. So let's add in the claps to this. So we can hit stop if we want to, but this is called Ableton Live, right? So we want to keep things going live. So I usually like to keep my kick pattern going as I build on the other beats. So we're going to create a MIDI clip here on our claps track. And again, I think we'll only need one bar for this, but we want to start by having the claps hit on beat number two and beat number four of each bar. And we've only got one bar, so we'll just place it on two and four. And the other thing I want to do in this video is I want to make a couple of different variations. Because we have these three different claps, I want to make a couple different variations on the clip and kind of stack them together in different ways. So this first one's going to be really simple. Let's turn this uh, preview button on here, this little headphone button. That's actually gonna allow us to audition the different samples just so we know which one's which. I think I wanna use clap two here. Um, and we're gonna place that on beat number two and beat number four. Now in my kick clip, I use the pointer tool to just double click the notes in. But it's also worth mentioning that we can click up here and turn on this, this uh, pencil tool. You can also toggle the pencil tool on and off by simply pressing the B key. You see that'll highlight that and turn it off. So we'll turn that on. Pencil tool is just going to allow me to single click a note in. And then I can also single click if I want to delete that note. So it just makes it a little bit easier. It's like one less click. And if you think about all the clicks you're going to have to do, that's about half the time you'd be spending. So it's kind of adds up. So we'll have uh, this variation of our clap pattern with clap number two here. Let's play it back. And clap number two, it's a little bit loud just in general. So let's just take the track volume here on the mixer. We'll just turn it down a little bit. I still want the kick to be the louder thing here. Okay, so we'll just have a very simple clap pattern with clap two. Let's duplicate this. So I'm gonna go to this clip here and I'm gonna press command D to copy it down. So we essentially have the exact same pattern, but on the second pattern, why don't we layer it up with the first clap with clap one here. So we'll just draw that in. We've got a slightly different tone, just hearing those two layered together. And if we want to, I'm gonna to toggle the pencil tool off and go back to the pointer tool. That's gonna to allow us to just click and hold and move notes around. If we want to, we can maybe take one of these and slide them a little bit off the grid so things aren't so perfectly on the 16th notes. Um, let's hear what we're working with here. This one here sounds a little bit more like Kind of a very human clap. It's reminding me of like um, uh, Forget Me Nots or the Men in Black for uh, 90s kids, if you remember the uh, Will Smith song, Men in Black. Here come the Men in Black. Anyway, um, so what I want to do is take that human sounding clap and maybe we'll slide that a little ahead of this more kind of snare clap sounding clap, just so it hits a little early. So we can do that by clicking and holding and then simply sliding it to the left or to the right, let's have it hit a little bit early. So I'm just continuing to hold my mouse button as I do this. Click and hold and drag it slightly to the left. And you see how it actually moved both of them? Let me just show you how I did that real quick. There was a little um, sleight of hand I did there. But if you click on the piano roll note here, it will actually select all the notes in that row. So both of those claps were selected. And then if I just drag one of them, it's gonna slide both of them a little bit earlier. Okay, I like that. Let's make a third variation. And actually, while we're doing this, we, it might be helpful to rename these clips so we know that they're different. So I'm gonna to go to this first one and just call it Claps One. And we'll go to the second one. And you guessed it, it's gonna be Claps Two. Now let's duplicate it one more time. We'll call this one Claps Three. And we're gonna add one more, we're gonna add our clap short here. So I want to have a little bit of, uh, this is going to be like a flavor clap. We're going to actually throw it in on the 16th note right before where the main ones hit. So we can pencil tool or pointer tool it in, whatever you're feeling. So something like that. Now, you know, it's happening a little too often. 
having it happen on every single clap, and I feel like that's going to get boring, so maybe we'll get rid of the first one and just have it hit on the second clap of each bar. I like it. Now the other thing I want to do is just bring the velocity of this clap down a little bit. I want this to be almost more like a ghost clap. And you can see down here we have this velocity editor window. And if you're not seeing that, just click this little arrow button here that shows and hides it. And we can bring the velocity of this clap down either by clicking this dot here and dragging that downward. And remember, velocity, because this setting is on by default inside the simpler that it loads the drum samples in, because this is set to 45%, that means that velocity is impacting the volume. So as we reduce the velocity, it's gonna get a bit quieter. So we can adjust the velocity by clicking the velocity dot down here, or we can actually hold the command or control key and move your mouse over the MIDI note. And as you're continuing to hold command or control, you can click or drag, click and drag up or down, I should say, to adjust the velocity. And you'll hear a little preview of it playing if you have that preview button on. Okay, and then we're gonna make one more variation to this. Oops. Let's Command D or Control D to duplicate it one more time. Then I'll press Command R or Control R. Call this Claps 4. And then this is just gonna be a very simple variation where all we're gonna do is have the, def uh, the human sounding clap, because I think in the first one we have that clap too, that more kind of like snare clap sounding thing. We'll have this one just playing on its own. So we're gonna get rid of clap two and clap one, and I'm just selecting the piano roll note, it's highlighting it, and I can press the delete key to remove those. And then we'll take this note and we'll quantize this back onto the grid. So we'll just have a version of the claps where we have this very human sounding clap right on the grid. So I've highlighted both of those notes just by clicking and dragging across like that, or again, we can click the piano roll note. And I'm gonna quickly open my quantize settings here. And quantizing is basically just the process of snapping your notes onto the grid. So I can open my quantize settings by going to the edit menu and selecting quantize settings, or I can use the key command shift command U or shift control U if you're on, if you're on a PC. So we can open that up and we're gonna quantize this to 16th notes. It looks like it's already set to do that. And we can adjust the notes start and end. That means it'll just take the beginning and the end of the note and snap it onto the grid on the nearest 16th note. We do want it to quantize 100%, meaning it's right on the grid. So let's hit okay. We should be good to go. Now the last thing I wanna do, just because these default colors for these tracks and these clips that Ableton Live gave me, I think they're pretty ugly. So I actually wanna change these. So we can change the colors of our tracks and our clips. Let's do the track first. So I'm just gonna right click up here. Let's make this a nice blue. Same with the claps. And then what I can do is I can right click on the actual track. And then from this context menu, I can select assign track color to clips. And that'll just give my clips all the same color as the actual track color. And then everything's just looking a little brighter, a little more like, like a sunny sky or sunny day. So anyway, that's gonna give us our components of our basic beat for our kick and our clap. And then in the next pattern, we'll kind of flesh out more of the percussion. I'll see you there.